Welcome to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast with your host, Tony Guerra. The Pharmacy Leaders Podcast is a member of the Pharmacy Podcast Network with interviews and advice on building your professional network, brand, and a purposeful second income from students, residents, and innovative professionals. So welcome to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast. Today, I have Mark Brunton on, who is the president of the Pharmacy Technician Educators Council. Uh, I've been to the last three national meetings. It is, one, an organization that you absolutely want to be a part of if you are in any way involved with technicians. And two, it is so valuable, the people that I've met through there. Uh, Mark himself started his career in hospital pharmacy in 1998, spent 20 years either training technicians in the field or in the classroom. And his major areas of expertise are automation, optimization, and public speaking. Uh, when he's not teaching how to be a competent pharmacy technician, he enjoys teaching swing dancing to one and all. So, Mark, welcome to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast. Hi, thank you for having me. So, Mark, tell me a little bit about your leadership road. Everybody's leadership road is a little different. Uh, how did you go from I am a pharmacy technician to I'm teaching pharmacy technicians to I'm president of the people teaching pharmacy technicians? That, that is definitely a, a crazy road. Um, so I started out, I was very young in hospital, um, was still in high school as a courier uh, until I moved up to be a technician. And I think uh, the need for leadership kind of started there. Um, we, we got uh, an, an education specifically. We upgraded and had the uh, Pixis Connect system when that first came out. Um, and none of the pharmacists knew really how to utilize it uh, to the best of its ability. So I just made a manual for it and and distributed it because uh, I, I wanted them not to be so frustrated with the technology. Uh, and from there, it, it kind of kept going. And, and one of the pharmacists suggested that I be uh, a teacher at a local college. So uh, I applied for that. And moved into the role as program director there. Got my start speaking uh, with ASHP at their mid-year convention um, and then started to speak at PTEC. And from there, then just decided to run for office. Okay. So tell me a little bit about, um, you know, kind of having that balance in your life. It sounds like you don't just do one thing. So tell me a little bit about uh, the public speaking side first. I started Toastmasters when I was really young. Uh, so I really enjoy public speaking. But uh, what is it that attracted you to public speaking? And, and what kind of uh, topics do you generally talk on? Sure. Um, so my background was uh, in theater, actually, uh, from middle school all the way into college uh, and then beyond in like the community theater sector, which is not a route that I see often uh, among technicians. Uh, specifically, I think there's just a it's, it's very two very kind of divergent uh, paths in terms of, of being very uh, technically minded to to the arts side of things sure right left, left brain right brain sure right so um the ability to get up in front of people and and basically perform was not was not foreign to me and so it's actually a, a very uh useful uh complementary skill set so i saw someone speaking once uh at mid-year and, and thought you know, and I can get up there and do that and, and kind of threw my ring in the hat. Uh, in terms of what I speak about, um, at first it was things I was doing in the field uh, with automation, optimization, different ways to utilize Pixis, for example, um, that we discovered just through trying things out. <laughs> and then uh, it moved into um, teaching techniques, pedagogy, and and the, the different uh, types of, of ways to engage um, the students that I was encountering in the vocational sector. So so tell me a little bit about what it is to teach someone to get a job. Right now, uh, pharmacy technician is a white hot career. Uh, they're, you know, they're, you cannot get and keep quality pharmacy technicians. What What is it that I guess um, – 
what is it that really started this kind of explosion of pharmacy technician opportunities? Because right now, it's really great time to be a tech. Absolutely. Um, I've just seen uh, exponential growth, uh, even here in, in Las Vegas. Um, and what I found the most interesting um, part of that in the training was that it's it's twofold. Specifically, we have to, of course, give them the industry specific knowledge, um, the drug words and the the techniques for sterile and non-sterile compounding, for example. Um, but really, in order to to deal with this explosion and and be able to provide quality technicians, then we get into the the professionalism aspect. We get into the the soft skills and the critical thinking um, portions that people have in varying levels uh, that come into to our programs. So getting them all on the same uh, minimum level is is the interesting challenge. I know where you're going with that. So tell me, I, I do know uh, one guy who is a recruiter, has a recruiting business. Tell me a little bit about how you do teach those soft skills. Uh, so many businesses want the person who's you know engaging, uh, works well with the customers, works well with the patients. Uh, maybe somebody hasn't been in retail or somebody hasn't been out there. Um, how do you take someone from where maybe they, they didn't know how to act in, in, in the professional setting to becoming a professional? Um, lots of role playing. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's up your alley. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, coming up with different scenarios and making them, uh, work through it, uh, I think is the best, which needs to happen before they even go out into their experiential, um, rotations sure. so that they can at least have an idea of what to expect. Um, you know, I think the acting background really comes back to that, too, because it, it's like improv and it's like uh, an audition. You know, how how do you put forth that that best version of you kind of thing? No, definitely. Well, let's let's actually take a, a tour of the um, national meeting. Um, that's where I kind of met everyone. And uh, I know that there is a part at ASHP where, you know, there's part dedicated to technicians. And I was at ASHP last uh, this last year. But tell me a little bit about uh, the national meeting. Uh, what was your first national meeting? And then maybe, um, you know, what you get out of the meeting. And then I'll talk about what I get out of it. Sure. Um, mine was a, about three years ago as well. And um, I was simply amazed at at the fact that it was so specific to what I did as an educator, because that's what we are. Um, but the fact that everyone was talking about the same stuff and all of them had many different uh, approaches to it. So the variety and the scope of that uh, to see all in one spot uh, was was awesome. And, and the ability to network and, and meet these different people doing the exact same thing that I was doing um, and maybe in a slightly different fashion allows us to compare notes um, and, and share different experiences we've had uh sometimes commiserate but uh that that stuck out to me the most that it was so um relevant to to technicians specifically yeah i I'm, i've heard the expression niche down till it hurts where you just make sure like you are speaking directly to that person and i remember talking uh, with another educator and we're like this, these are our people. This is our home. This is us. You know, we teach technicians, they teach te technicians. And it was, I, I just felt so comfortable there. Um, tell me a little bit about some of the relationships you've made there and, and how they've helped you kind of with the program that you had had. Oh, um, well now I know, I know program directors and educators in, I don't know how many States, uh, in the country. And, it's been it's been a great resource to be able to reach out to them um, and ask uh, different things that I've encountered or they ask me, you know, what are you doing about this uh, standard or or this activity? Um, we have a, a Google group for for P-Tech and, and a lot of people go there to to 
ask everyone about uh, different things going on and, and share ideas and even um, documents and exercises that they've developed uh, versus trying to reinvent the wheel. So that's all. That's been a great um, boon. Um, and I, I'm friends with some of them on Facebook, and we we now have developed fast friendships, and it's it's a uh, it's a great group of, of people. Yeah, when uh, I started, I. Um, I set my curriculum to the accreditation standard and then I was like, oh my gosh, now we're at the accreditation standard and then I've got all of these kind of check boxes to do. And each time I put a question out there, it really didn't take long, maybe a couple hours sometimes, maybe a day or two, but I would almost always get either an answer or an answer and a document like, well, I've already solved that problem for you. But tell me a little bit about um, the focus on accreditation at the actual meeting. There are usually a couple of sessions just on accreditation, uh, one on the visit and then one on the actual getting your uh, own site in, uh, accredited as part of um, ASHP accreditation. Absolutely. We, we, we always dedicate um, a certain portion of the programming to that uh, with um, PTAC. Uh, in order to explain that as well as those who are already accredited, because we know that um, not all of our members um, have gone through that process or are going through that process and want to know more. So they they definitely walk them through um, what to expect during a visit, um, what kinds of things they're looking for, how best to prepare. Uh, and the Q&A at the end is is very useful for a, a case to case basis. So at that, that time is when people can go, listen, this is what I have going on where I'm at. Um, what, what do I do? And so it, it's a direct line to the people that have all the answers. <laughs> yeah, no, it, and they, they come to you. Um, tell me a little bit about PTCB as well. Uh, that tends to be a perennial visitor to the uh, national conference. So, um, you know, we, we've got the, the two different certifications, uh, but I think PTCB, I, I know, has uh, been there at least the last two years. Uh, tell me a little bit about um, their involvement. Uh, I know um, McAllister has been there, I think, yeah, both times that I was there. So I, I saw I saw him as well. So tell me a little bit about the interaction with PTCB. Um, they they have a very close um, working relationship with us. Um, and definitely seek out um, feedback on on initiatives and things that they are are moving forward with um, to see how educators would have input into that because many of of the test takers um, are now coming directly from the school. So our preparation of the students um, gives insight into what they can expect and what we'd want to see from them. Um, as evidence now, they have the, uh, they just started the sterile product exam, um, which is, is rolling out and I think is a um, reflection of the, the changes to our field and the different levels of responsibility and, and, um, no, I, I agree. I, with the PDCB certified compound sterile prepar it's compounded sterile preparation technician program, right? C C S P T. I'm getting acronym crazy. <laughs> PTCB C S P T. Uh, yes. Yeah, and and they, you know, it's it's. I guess the one thing that I really took away is that there's always going to be changes, <laughs> and it was just nice to be around people who had answers to you know what's going on next. Um, so tell me a little bit about uh, you know how does PTEC work with sterile com not sterile compounding directly, but um, how can we learn a little bit more about um, the opportunities maybe in sterile compounding versus uh, some of the retail opportunities? I'm wondering if they will be able to uh, have specific um, information or, or links to to careers in that field. I mean, I learned mine in the hospital, uh, okay. you know, and I've seen the proliferation of home infusion as well as uh, the the 
outsourcing uh, that's come about like CAPS, um, Central Administrative Pharmacy Services, that will will do a lot of the batch IVs for different facilities in a particular region. So those are definitely what I've seen um, coming into existence where if you just want to make IVs, that's that's what you can do. Okay. You, know? um, you were especially involved with technology. Tell me a little bit about some of the technology that's that's come out and the expertise that somebody would need to to get those kinds of jobs. For the base level of operation uh, of of the technology that we're seeing, um, I think anyone with uh, with just what we call tech savvy and mm-hmm. would just not be uh, intimidated by different um, user experiences. So you know the different menus and things. With I think that they they definitely especially with automation. It, it follows along the same lines as as even your mobile phones now. You know, with the if you know how to navigate a menu via a touch screen, you're pretty good. In terms of the advanced roles for optimization and things, um, learning how the back end uh, works with um, different options for reporting features um, and things like that. So being able to look at at the data would would be a useful skill set um the manual <laughs> <laughs> well no that's something that that we we kind of um you, you took that on yourself but uh that's kind of interesting that you would you know, like okay well here's a problem i'm not just going to solve it for myself i know how to do it i'm going to solve it for everybody but in many ways, we kind of have to create our own manual for as educators that we're, here's my curriculum. Here's how I'm going to run things here. Um, how did you kind of go from, you know, just, okay, I need to fix my problem to I can help by publishing this document that's going to help other people? Sure. Um, hmm. When I heard of of people having the same problems I was encountering but had already figured out a solution to, that's when I I realized maybe I should should, uh, put this out for everyone else. It may not work for everybody, but it's an option. Um, And when I say say the manual, here's what I see with technology, um, all forms. is when they create a new a new piece of, of hardware that we utilize, be it a um, a pill counting a laser eye pill counting machine uh, to uh, an automated dispensing cabinet to an IV compounder, um, they will teach you the basic operation of the machine because that's the easiest way to go about it for the orientation. But there's a plethora of different options that are available if you read their manual and and look at what all of the the bells and whistles um, are that are potentially there, which actually gives the machine a lot more um, capabilities than we are usually um, initially trained on. Okay, so it sounds like um, some. It sounds like you have to have kind of a what's the word a champion for the the. The, the person, the go-to person for the technology um, can very much be the pharmacy technician who's kind of just said, no, I just like doing this stuff. I understand this stuff. And I took the time to read the manual where the rest of us are sitting there like, look, can you fix it? Or, you know, yes. it, it's why, why is it spitting this out instead of this? Or why is why is it not working? I feel like sometimes maybe we we don't take enough time beforehand once we get a new technology and it sounds like a technician's role can often be kind of the person that that uh, kind of bridges the gap i guess you would say um, absolutely yeah. absolutely yeah that is a uh, an area of that we can grow i mean in the name we are technicians like, <laughs> let's do the technical stuff and allow the pharmacist to to be able to to use all of the knowledge of their of their more advanced degree uh, and work on the stuff they want to work on and and we'll handle all of the uh, the stuff that they don't have to worry about um, you know and, and then part of that is that is that tech, technical aspect um, 
and it comes from a desire um and i it's it wasn't completely altruistic i won't say that i wanted to make my job easier <laughs> so I, I took the time to figure it out not just because i want to help everybody but because it would make the running of of day-to-day operations uh flow more smoothly so you know that's that that's a a big carrot to to dangle out there. Uh, that, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, well, um, so uh, tell me a little bit about the the meeting, um, when, where it's going to be, and then what's the best way if someone's a technician or a technician educator or a pharmacist, uh, how they could uh, get in touch with someone to get registered. Absolutely. Um, the conference itself is in Indianapolis, uh, Indiana, so. Um, we will be doing a, a circuit of cities. Uh, the last one, of course, was in Las Vegas, uh, my hometown. So I think there's uh, plans to have five, five or six different locations, but the next one's in Indianapolis. It is uh, July 12th through the 14th um, of this year. So our website is pharmacytecheducators.com. Um, you can also find us on Facebook if you just look up PTEC or Pharmacy Technician Educators Council, um, and we post lots of stuff there as well as on our homepage. Um, once registration opens, we will have a link and we'll share it on, on all of our social media for uh, actual registration, but it will be through the website. There is a, a tab for the conference and all of that. Uh, and I've asked you a lot of questions. Are there any things that you want to um, say or any advice that you want to give uh, before we sign off? I think we can all agree that we have seen what makes uh, a good technician and what makes a better technician um, if we've had any experience in the field. And my um, driving desire was always to make help create uh, a better technician just by giving them the tools and the skills to go out there and 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 do everything that they they have the the capacity for and the the ability to do um and by doing that we then elevate the profession um if if all the technicians out there are are doing the maximum amount they can uh, I think that opens up new possibilities, new roles and responsibilities, and I'm just glad to have a part in that. Um, so, you know, that's my, my my way of giving back to the profession. Um, and thank you for having me on the show. Um, you got the tech, the Educator of the Year Award last year because you're the man. So. <laughs> I, I, I I appreciate that. Uh, I, and I and I was actually upstairs and and I think. Yeah, the president had to like text me like, "Hey, you need to come down for something." And I was like, <laughs> "What?" You know, I was like, "I, I you know, I, I, it was because it was lunch, and I just wasn't really hungry right then. I was going to come down a little bit later, but that was a that was a funny story." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, surprise. <laughs> but no, that was a that was a wonderful honor, and and uh, it was really really uh, nice to get that award. Well, Mark, thanks so much for being on the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Support for this episode comes from Good Night Pharmacology. 350 brand and generic name drugs with classifications. A leading resource for students in the United States, United Kingdom, and Australia. Print, ebook, and audiobook available on Audible, iTunes, and Amazon.com. Thank you for listening to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast with your host, Tony Guerra. Be sure to share the show with the hashtag hash pharmacy leaders 